Your life is supposed to suck right now. I know your life is supposed to suck right now because my life sucked at 24 and 25. I was living in my father-in-law's basement with a bunch of nasty cats that were pooping all over the place and it smelled like piss down there all the time. I had no job. I didn't even have a job. I was in between jobs around that time. I had a personal training job and they fired me. And then, uh, and then I didn't know what to do. My parents left. My parents went down to Florida around that time and I was still living up in New York. It was a freezing cold winter. I remember that winter, I got fired. It was a cold ass winter, a lot of snow and I got sick. I got more sick than I think I've ever gotten in my life. It was crazy. I had $10,000 in savings and it was like, and my wife earned, it was about half of us, you know, she, cause she was a teacher back then too. She was working and we lost it. That's all I had. I had to I save that up. Like a bunch of it was from our wedding. I lost it cause we were trying to get a house at the same time. I'm telling you about all the shitty things that happened when I was about 25. We, so we, we were having a baby, the baby was coming and we wanted to buy a house on Long Island, not too far from my parents. We had $10,000. And then we put it as a down payment on the house and we were going to go, we we're going to move forward with it, but things changed. Our values changed. Actually, I decided that, you know what, it's better to keep you home. Like I, you're going to have to go back to work three months after the baby comes if we take this house. And so we asked for the money back to, from the lady. We thought she was a nice old lady. She said, no, I'm keeping your money and I'm selling the house to somebody else. I was like, I lost all my money. I was sick as a dog. My parents moved and left. I didn't know what I was going to do for my life. I knew I wanted to be a personal trainer. That I knew. I want to be a personal trainer. I mean, I want to be a strength coach. I want to teach people how to get strong. Um, but I had no idea how I was going to do that. I had no money. So we moved down to Florida with my parents. So here I am again now, 25. And I'm living in a, my parents' house with my wife and my baby. So it was, a, it was a step up from my father-in-law's basement, but now I'm living in my parents' new Florida house. And I'm working from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. And I did that six days a week. I, on Sunday, I would, they closed the gym at, at, at a little early. So I would, get, I would get home a little bit earlier. I did that for almost a year. And I really wasn't making very much money at all. I was breaking my face. I remember I was so befuddled and dumbfounded. I didn't know how people made money. I was like, I'm working my face off. I'm, I'm training all these people. I'm like, I, I, I'm, I'm in like $100,000 in debt, student loans. I'm paying off my wife's student loans, my student loans. And I remember walking down the street in like a nice neighborhood one day and I'm look and we, funny thing like I ended up living in that neighborhood like 10 years later on that same block it's cr that's mind-blowing I was uh, I lived end up living on that same block but I remember because we lived in like kind of a ghetto area my, when my wife and I finally got a place by ourselves I would I would drive all the way up to it was called Old Northeast in St. Pete I'll drive all the way up to Old Northeast just to walk around the nice neighborhood and I walk around the nice neighborhood and I look at these houses and I, and I shake my head. I'm like scratching my head. Like how do people buy these? Like I, there's nothing I wanted more than anything but a house for my wife and for my family. That's all I wanted. You know, I, I'm not, I, like, I, I don't want much. You know, I just want to take care of my family. I love my family. And I just, I couldn't figure out like, how do you save up? Like, you know, in order to buy one of those houses, I would have to save up like $100,000 for a down payment, right? You know? Like, uh, depending, you know, the, the, that was back in um, 2000, you know, the early 2000s also. So, the, like, the, the bubble, the real estate bubble was huge. <laughs> and then right before I was about, my life was about to get going, like, I started strength camp, the bubble burst, it popped. And then we went into a, into a depression. I don't know if you, under, you guys remember, but it was like, a, you know, a recession in 2008. People were losing their houses. They were losing their jobs. Here I am, like just starting out, trying to you know get clients in a warehouse. I had a little, little warehouse. Let me tell you about my warehouse gym, my old warehouse gym. You know, here I am. You know, maybe about twenty-seven at the time, and I don't know why this guy leased this to me, but I did not have the money to pay for that damn rent. 
I use credit cards to pay for my first three rents <laughs> for three months. You know when the credit card companies send you a check in the mail and they're like, hey, all you got to do is sign this check and the money is yours. I signed checks like that and gave them to my, I, I, got, I had like three of them and I signed them over to my uh, landlord. And at the time I was starting, we were starting to have babies at that time too, man. So apart, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm spilling out, a, I'm creating a pity party here with you right now, letting you know that like, yo, bro, my life sucked at 24. Life is hard when you're 14 because I had a hard time between the ages of 12 and 14. I didn't understand the cycles of life at the time. But I thought back, I was like, man, I had, those are some tough times. And I'm like, why am I going through tough times again now? I'm in 24. Then when I turned 36, I looked back and I was like, wait a second, 12, 24, 36, 36, I, my life got shitty again. You know, and like, it was just another one of those cycles because I went into winter time again. So you're just, you just got to hang in there and recognize that it's a cycle. It's a rhythm. It's normal. It's natural. You're exactly where you got to be. The worst thing you can do is worry. The worst thing you could do is try to predict. The worst thing you could do is try to make something happen. The best thing you could do is be grateful. That's the first thing I started with. The best thing you could do is be open. The best thing that you could do is be receptive. The best thing that you could do is love yourself the way that God loves you during this time. And even if things on the outside don't look like the way you want them to look, turn your eyes away and consider all that's on its way. Porn. 68% of church going men watch it secretly, hiding this vice from their wife. For other men, it's alcohol or drug use. Are you willing to risk your marriage, family, and finances for sinful pleasures and vice? Or are you ready to fight back? If you're a married Christian businessman or entrepreneur caught in the clutches of drinking, drugs, or jerking off, realize that every moment spent in these vices is literally destroying your life. Is this the man God called you to be, to live like this? If you're ready to go to war against vice and take your life back, here's my advice. Click the link in this video or visit waronvice.com to book a call with me to see if we're a good fit for going into battle together. I'll see you on the inside.